order on the first lap. A tremendously close packed first lap with Stewart not getting away as much as it looked as if he might by the end. We're on the 11th lap now. We've got 70 laps and a bit to go. To the tobacconist, Jackie Stewart in the lead. Through the hairpin. Stewart, young wife, Helen, one of the loveliest girls in motor racing, is in the pit doing his timing in his lap chart. She's the professional racing driver's wife in most cases is a vital part of the team. Here come the next match after Stewart. Heyman, Trevor, Eke, uh, Meltwas, Eke, Hull, Pescarolo, Ritz. Up Sunday, though, towards the casino, on the first days of drama, Ix sticks his hand in the air. The smoke tells a story. He soon has to pull into the side of the track with a split fuel tank. With the Ferrari out of the way, the battle was now really enjoined between Jack Brabham and Chris Amon, with the old Australian doing everything he could to get past the young New Zealander. Brabham giving... Brabham waving his arm there, asking for a blue flag. That raising of the arm in that situation usually means that he thinks the marshals should show Amon a blue flag to let him through. It looks to me, though, on the circuit, as though on the power parts of the circuit, Eamon can draw out of it. Brabham closes on him on the curly bit and thinks that uh, Eamon should be given a blue flag and should let him by. Eamon doesn't think so and uh, I think he's unlikely to be put off by seeing this gesture in the mirror behind him. I don't think Eamon is about to give anything away to Brabham. We're on the 17th lap now. Stewart leading by quite a little bit from Eamon Brabham and Belcois, who are all very close together. And behind them, there's Halm, Pescarolo, Ritz, and Courage is eight. Stewart there, through the chicane. And Stewart, now rounding the hairpin, they come down to the hairpin, Eamon has a few yards. Brabham closes right up and makes a go to go inside and he's got inside but he didn't make it. Eamon cut the door and Brabham jolly nearly lost third place to Meltwild through that manoeuvre. Here they go, they're still in the same order but Brabham is much further behind. So that manoeuvre didn't help Jack Brabham. Eamon firmly shut the door on that inside manoeuvre of Brabham. And Meltwild almost took third. But Jackie's done 125 now. Jackie Stewart has done 1 minute 25 seconds, which is uh, a yet another new lap record. leader and the man who dominated practice and the first 27 six laps of this race is in the pit having a drink they're attending to the engine and the order now is Brabham first, Eamon second, Hull third, Pescarolo fourth because Beltois also came into the pits and retired with gearbox trouble, Seifert in the second of the works marches is fifth and Courage of the De Tomaso is sixth. We've lost McLaren, who I think must have hit at the curb somewhere because he came in for a puncture, changed the wheel, and then came in again on the next lap with damaged steering. 
and we haven't seen him since. So that's McLaren. Very disappointed Jean-Pierre Beltois is there on the right of the picture. His car broke its gearbox. Stewart's car still uh, with the mechanics attending to it. And that's Beltois Matra with uh, attempt to rebuild the gearbox. 40 laps. Halfway, 40 laps. The order, Jack Brabham in the lead. Chris Amon only a couple of seconds behind him in second place. Halm in third place being caught by Rint. Rint in the Lotus getting very close to Halm's McLaren. Rint fourth then. Fifth is Pescarolo. Sixth is Seaford. Seventh is Oliver in the BRM. And eighth is Graham Hill going very well after starting in an unfamiliar car from the back of the grid. Ninth is young Peterson in the Colin Crabbe or Antique Automobiles entered McLaren. Tenth is Rodriguez and eleventh is Stewart who led the race for the first 26 laps. And there's still only 1.3 seconds between Brabham and Hayman. After 40 laps, nearly 80 miles of racing, there's still only 1.3 seconds between these two men. Jack Brabham, the 44-year-old Australian in his own Brabham Ford, and Chris Amon, the 26-year-old New Zealander in the works mark. And Jochen Rint in the Lotus has taken third place from Dennis Hull. It looks like happening and it has. Rint in the Lotus is third ahead of Holmes McLaren. And Graham Hill has passed Jackie Oliver up into seventh place. There's another change of place further down. There's Jochen Rint, who's now in third place. Jochen Rint with last year's Lotus, modified at the front end with smaller wheels. A little bit of a disappointment. They haven't been able to get the latest Lotus 72 competitive yet. And Jochen Rint, who did, was, didn't fare terribly well in practice, he was back on the fourth row in practice, but he's now got up to third place. A great drive for the young Austrian. Brabham still leading, number five, Jack Brabham, still in front. Eamon second, Rint third, Holm fourth, Pescarolo fifth, Stephen sixth, Graham Hill seventh. And Oliver's in trouble with the BRM. Jack Brabham there, number five, barring mechanical trouble, he's got this race in his pocket. There he comes, out of the Casino Square, over the bump, down the hill to Mirabeau, right at Mirabeau, and there's Rint coming up the hill into the Casino Square. So he's got all that distance. The length of time, that Rint, and Rint very sideways there, out of the Casino Square. And he's got all that deficit behind Brabham. Pescarolo has now overtaken Seaford. And behind Seaford, who's fourth, is Halm fifth. Hill sixth. Young Peterson in his first Grand Prix is seventh, a great achievement, and Rodriguez is eighth. Ten laps to go. Ten laps to go for Jack Brabham in the lead with the Brabham BT-33. And it's only 11 and a half seconds now. Rint is catching him. There's a slow replay of Brabham's line. Close inside then wide outside of the exit. Very steady. No sliding, no wrestling with the wheel. Very smooth, saving the car and himself for still another 10 laps of this very hard race. And it's only 11 and a half seconds now, the gap between him and Rint. So Rint is making time. Pescarolo going superbly in third place for France with the Matra. Hull the New Zealander in the McLaren is fourth. A rather thick march of Stephens is fifth. And Graham Hill, who started right at the back in a borrowed car, repainted overnight into the Rob Walker colours, is sixth. 
Ronnie Peterson, seventh in his first Grand Prix, and Rodriguez from Mexico is eighth, after not a very happy race. Brabham at the hairpin for the 71st time. Brabham had a pretty good practice, not much in the way of drama. They had some engine trouble at the early stages and some braking problems on the uh, Saturday. The car's superb now, and that rinse in slow motion at the hairpin. Much more, much more twirling of the wheel, more tail-out stuff. Quite suddenly, in the last few laps, and rather unexpectedly, Rint has begun to close up. And it's now down to about four and a half seconds. Quite suddenly, in the last couple of laps, Jock and Rint making a tremendous... Look at the crowd going absolutely mad, cheering on the second man. The crowd would love a dramatic finish, and so would we. And quite suddenly, a few laps ago, only a couple of laps ago, he was... Oh, 10 seconds and more, and it looks as though it was all over. Look at him sliding there. Look at Rich coming down over those huts. All sideways and really pressing. Into the tunnel in the last two laps. Look at them there. You can see them. They're not very far apart. Meanwhile, Seaford further back has lost another place. Rodriguez is now sixth, and Seaford is seventh. Graham Hill is still fifth. And look at Rich there. Everybody in the crowd all the way around the circuit is going mad. He's right on his tail. Right on his tail there at the hairpin. They're coming to start the last lap. Up past the pit, across the finishing line to start the last lap. One and a half seconds. Can he make up one and a half seconds in this last fantastic lap? Is it possible? If anybody can hold him off, it's Brabham. Tremendous finish this. We haven't seen a finish like this at Monte Carlo for years. Generally speaking, we've only got perhaps a few cars left and some of them are sick. But this is really Grand Prix racing a disgrace. Tremendous finish. Pescarolo third, Holm fourth, Hill fifth, Rodriguez sixth, Seaford seventh and Peterson eighth. And on the last lap, it's anybody's win. Now then, they're going on to the fastest part. This is the straight. Up into fourth, fifth gear, into the tunnel, out of the tunnel. It looks as though Brabham's got it. He's still got about a second. Joe Seifert has pulled up before the tobacconist. He's in real trouble right at the end. That's bad luck. And Rint catching right up on him at the tobacconist. He's right up on him. It's seven tenths of a second at the back of the pit into the hairpin, there they go, and there's a slow car there, and Brabham's gone straight on, Brabham's run out of road, Brabham's run out of road, and Rint has it, Brabham goes straight on at the hairpin, and Rint wins the race, Jochen Rint for Lotus, wins the Monaco Grand Prix, there's a replay, Brabham is coming slowly over in second place, Brabham has managed to finish second, now look at this, look at this, look, Brabham slides under steers, wheels locked, straight on into the wall, and look at his face, you can even see through the mask, you can imagine the expression on his face, and there Rint goes through victoriously and triumphantly. That's to the victor the spoils, and as Jochen Rint received the trophy from Prince Rainier, the final placings for the 1970 Monaco Grand Prix were confirmed as second, the gallant Jack Brown, third, Henri Pescarolo, fourth, Denny Holm, fifth, the incredible Graham Hill, and sixth, Pedro Rodriguez. So the Monaco Grand Prix in those last desperate few yards. Jochen Rintz. Jochen, what about that fantastic last corner victory? Tell us about it. Well, I was catching Jack slightly, and something must have gone wrong in the last five laps for him because he wasn't quite as quick. And I was catching him more and more and more. And then it was two seconds, and it was one second, and I was actually following him into the last lap. And he just overcooked the last braking for the last corner. And he went straight and I went around the corner and I won it. I can't believe it myself. In fact, he'd had a brake problem all through the race and it got worse and that's what caused it. Yes, possible, something like that. I, actually, I had a brake problem in the beginning of the race. This is why I was so slow in the beginning. 
After practice, which wasn't terribly great for you, you must have been very, very thrilled to pull this one off, your second Grand Prix and your first Monaco. Well, the car worked much better than in practice. It changed a lot between practice and the race day, and everything worked perfect except the brakes in the beginning. And I had to overcook them, let them cool down, go slow for a few laps, and then, you know, try to catch them up. And it you know, worked out very well. All that while the race was going on. And did you know, therefore, that you're now equal third in the championship with Dennis Holm behind Brabham, who leads, and Stewart, who's second? What about that now at this stage? Third place. Well, it's good news for me, especially when the new 72 Lotus comes out, which is supposed to be a lot quicker, and, I, you know, we should have a better chance then. And one more piece of good news. Did you know that you put up the fastest ever lap round here? Uh, right at the end of the race and 123.2, 84 miles an hour. Yeah, that shows you how quick you can go if you have to. <laughs> See, we're all laying about before. Marco Grand Prix has not only lived up to its punishing reputation, but surpassed itself in that fictional last gasp, last corner melodrama. Poor Jack Braben explained ruefully after the race that he'd had to apply his brakes slightly harder than he intended to avoid a back marker, and as we saw, they locked up and Jack was helpless. Never in all his 23 years of motor racing, including his dirt track days in Sydney, can Jack Brabham have known such last-minute heartache. Still, he has the consolation tonight of leading the World Championship table. He has 15 points to Jackie Stewart's 13. Then we have Denny Holm and Jochen Rint with nine apiece, and Graham Hill and Bruce McLaren with six apiece. Mario Andretti, who didn't race today, has four. Pescarolo has four. Beltoise three. Servo Gavan two. John Miles two and Pedro Rodriguez scored BRM's sole point of the season today. But at the end of this spectacular, sensational day, the last word should surely belong to the man who won the most...